with each of these major players in the community of healthcare practitioners armed with their degrees, sometimes the issue of who leads the team crops up. No doctor can care for a patient alone. And that is the basic truth and that is a fact of medical practice. But as it is, every team needs a lead. And in the healthcare system, the lead is the doctor. That gives him the responsibility of uh, giving direction, the responsibility of watching out for the rest of the team, the responsibility of ensuring that every effort of each of the team uh, members leads to the goal of that team. You know, and that is to make sure that the patients get well. Leading the healthcare team is different from leading the hospital. The hospital is an institution and whoever is the lead job is mostly administrative. To my understanding, that is what people are contending. Let me use analogy of football. Because I'm an ardent football fan. There are 11 players. 11 players make up a team. There's a goalkeeper, there's a center forward, there are center backs, there are, you have a right and left backs, we call them the full backs. You have midfielders. What I'm saying, each member of, those, of a football team has a specific role. Conventionally, you do not say the goalkeeper is the head of the team. You do not say the center back will always be the head of the team. I don't know whether it makes sense. And I think it's the same thing that should influence or dictate the choice of who leads a team in the health sector. The endeavor at hand really will determine who leads the team. <laughs> turn away from professional rivalry within the healthcare community in Nigeria. Another major challenge that stares everyone in the face is incessant strike actions. Solidarity, solidarity for in the health sector, I don't think any of the professionals likes going on strike. You will remind they will write, they will take full all the procedures, demand for this, demand for that, demand for good working environment, tools to work, consumables, they are not there. And you see them trying to manage, trying to manage, trying to manage. One day, the team will cry out. And it's when they cry out, the public now will complain. But the public, from onset, we not see when they have been writing, they've been complaining, they've been calling or going on media. No, nobody will talk. And then they will say they, are, they like going on strike. No, they don't like it. We don't like it. It's one of the things we, the things we hate. So the government should do the needful so that the health workers will not embark on strike. We don't like it. With all of these issues hovering around the healthcare team, how best do members of this team work together in the interest of the patient and overall healthcare system in Nigeria? For me, I will say we are not yet there yet. And it would be good if we all work together as a team. I think that is the best thing so as to work together to achieve a common goal, which is patient um, safety and uh, uh, wellness. For me, I think it's just human factor. We all need to just look at it that everybody is important in our sector, even the cleaner. Everybody is important because if the cleaner, if my own cleaner does not come to do his or her job by taking care of the environment, it will be difficult for me to work there. So as long as we see each other as very important in the health sector, then there won't be a problem. We'll be able to work together as a team. The only thing is everybody should just stay within his own, his or her own um, profession and make sure you, you work optimally. 
to the patient, the family members, and the healthcare delivery team. It leaves them with negative impact. One, the healthcare delivery team, they will not be fulfilled because they've not done their best. They've not given their best because of the enabling. The environment is not giving them the power to do that. Now to the patient and to the relatives, they also have not gotten the best from the healthcare delivery team. So it is all about Nigerian policies. What then is the panacea for better health care services in the country? We need modern equipment. We need training. We need capacity, human capacity development. And there, there's no how you go into human capacity development in this modern age without modern equipment. So we appeal to the government that they should please get all our teaching hospitals modern equipment. Look, it will be very, it's a, it, to me, or to those, those of us in the healthcare delivery team, it's sad that a teaching hospital will refer patients to private organizations outside. I want to see a health uh, system that will be attractive enough for my colleagues to stay back and work in it. I want to see a health system that the environment is conducive enough that you could run with 24 hour power supply. I want to see a health system where the equipment are functional and not obsolete. I want to see a health system where I could depend for an investigation to make a diagnosis and I could get that investigation done within 24 hours. I want to see a health system where I could prescribe a life saving medication and I could get it within the next two hours. You know, these are the kind of things we want to see. All of these challenges seem to be well known to the Apex Health Authority in Nigeria which is represented by the Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewole. The country has had two previous health policies, one in 1988, one in 2004. So we decided to work on a new national health policy. And that policy is about resetting the image, the consciousness, and the mindset of people about the health sector. Health is now being considered as an important tool for socioeconomic development. And we believe that the new health policy will help us to drive this. So there are quite a number of issues about the attitude of our healthcare professionals, doctors and nurses, are they caring enough, the issue of skill set, the issue of emergencies. So, and we've set up a technical working group to work on all of this. So I can assure you that um, we are aware of some of the challenges we are working on it. Much as these workers face both self-made and system-induced challenges, they have moments of fulfillment and also times when they rely on the old saying in the medical community that goes, we care, but God heals. There was a case of a patient that came here. Um, she had like a seven-day seven day old baby. And she was dragged in here, you know, the father was there, the husband was there, and she was dragged in here. And we gave her injection. And the next day, this patient comes in. And, you know, I saw the father, I said, where's your, where your daughter? I said, that's my daughter. I mean, we f I felt really good that this is within a day, you know. So it's really exciting when we see a patient that, you know, your medication is working. But as I said, it's not all the patients that will respond. Some of them would not respond. You know, maybe some of them will respond to this. And I, let me give you another example. I had a doctor that was here, um, an admission. You know, he got to a certain stage. He didn't get better. I, that makes us feel a bit sad. But really, there's really nothing you can do. You know, so sometimes it just gets to that stage where the patient is well to a certain level. You know, but when they come in and they do well, of course, we're excited. We're happy for them because that's why we're here. It means we're doing our job. As we draw the curtains on today's edition of Community Reports, one other key issue that needs to be looked into is the relationship between the patient and the healthcare giver. 
I noticed that a lot more work is needed in that area so that everyone that is located within the health community, whether as a service provider or receiver, is treated with dignity and respect. Thank you for your time with us on the show this week. Let's connect on any of our feedback platforms showing on your screen. I'm Yomi Otaigi. I'll see you next time.